Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head back to Spain and it's been a little while since I reviewed anything from there and it's also been a little while since I reviewed something from this brewery as well. But this was yet another of the small partiers that we got through from Seisten Bolaga on the 18th I believe it was of January 2019. So yeah, for this one we are going to have a little look at another beer from Napa Beer who are from just outside of Pamplona and we're having a taste of their fuzz today. So this one comes in at 5.8%. It's a New England style pale ale. I think this is actually the lightest of the beers that I've had from these guys over the uh, over the two years or so that I've been able to review these ones. But I've had some very good experiences from these guys in the past. I think all of the beers I've tried from them have been IPAs rather than pale ales, but hopefully their lighter beer does follow on in the same light as the IPAs and because those have been very, very good. And I know there's a huge thriving beer scene in Spain these days from all different parts of the country so I do hope that I can get over there at some point soon and have a little look at that for myself but yeah really cool to return to Spain after a little while and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website linked my other reviews that I've done from Napa beer before no doubt there will be some more in the near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries, there is one there for all the Spanish beers that I've reviewed for you, that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you're showing the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Napa beer then. So as I've mentioned to you before, Napa beer are based in Nauwin and Navarro in Spain, which is just a little bit to the south of Pamplona, but apparently in a few previous reviews I made the mistake of saying that this is in the Basque country, but it's not in the Basque country. But the company was founded back in 2009 by four entrepreneurs. So this was Juan Rodriguez, Yosu Taninye, Gera Astui, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and also Javier Rodriguez. But the guys found themselves unemployed, I think due to the economic problems that were going on in Spain, and so they decided to move forward with starting their own business and they started off with a very small warehouse of only 150 square meters with a very modest capacity but later in 2012 they moved into a larger facility where they could produce 500,000 litres of beer per year but in the early days they did a number of collaborations with well-known Scandinavian breweries and I think this is how they made their name uh, kind of up here and how they got their connection to Seisten Bolaga and they also did some stuff with other European breweries as well and this really helped them establish their reputation. These guys are definitely one of the more recognisable um, Spanish craft beer names out there at the moment. You know, you've got Edge Brewing, you've got Baslin Brewing Project as well. And there are various other ones, but there's not that much Spanish craft beer actually makes outside of Spain. France is another country that's like that, and I guess Italy to some extent as well. But then that's one of the kind of curses, but also one of the very cool things about the whole craft beer, uh, the whole craft beer scene, if you like. It's very difficult to get things from certain parts of uh, of Europe. But in 2014, they expanded their brewery again, and they're now joined by two more partners. So this is Alec from Madrid and Sven Bosch, who is from Barcelona, who's involved with the Beer Cab Bar, and. Uh, the brewery, I think, have gone from strength to strength and uh, they're continuing to get their beers out there a little bit more. And it is quite cool that you get companies, you're getting companies from this. It does seem to be that the southern European countries that are obviously very, very good wine producers are also very good at craft beer. I found that in, you know, there's some good Spanish beer there that I know about. Italy seems to be the same. And, you know, some of the Greek craft beers that I reviewed for you a little while back um, were also very, very good. So if you get the chance to go to these countries, make sure you try some of the craft beers because they're there does seem to be a trend that wine countries tend to make very good craft beer countries as well. But um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery for just now. If you want to learn a little bit more, do check out the brewery website. And of course, you can follow them on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. And that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on at the brewery. So yeah, um, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So as you can see, this one has the kind of typical Napa beer style artwork on this one. I have to admit, I really do like this brewery's artwork that they produce. It's always rather quite inventive, I have to say. You can see an almost kind of psychedelic um, type skull on this one. It's quite heavy metal, that... Um, it's very, very cool. So thumbs up to Napa Beer for their artwork. I'm not sure on the top if this is meant to be like a broken record. I've always wondered what these... Um, 
what this is meant to be. I think it's meant to be like a broken vinyl, but it's almost kind of like an eyeball or something like that as well, which is quite interesting. Um, but yeah, really nicely presented this one. It comes in at 5.8% AVV, and obviously this one has been in, it has been done. I think this batch has been specially done for export to uh, to Scandinavia, of course, because it does say Starkool on the side, and I'm guessing the ones in uh, Spain wouldn't exactly say that. But one of the things, of course, with say Stembolaga is to get the beer into say Stembolaga, we have to take samples up a year before and then I think the brewery tends to brew a fresh batch of it a, a month or two in advance so that it's ready to be released at City Stembolaga. It's one of the kind of bad things I guess you could say about um, about the, the nationalised system but you know we do get some very very interesting beers through it that way but I do think they need to be a little bit more flexible when it comes to regulations for their craft breweries but as soon as you pop this beer open you get a, no a nice lovely dose of um, Juicy fruits coming out of this one. I'm think I'm wondering what hops it is. It didn't say on the website exactly what hops and stuff they had uh, used in this one. So I would be very very curious just to see exactly what comes out of this one. But I'm suspecting. I wonder if there's a little bit of mosaic in this one just from the way that the um, the aromas come out. There's definitely a little bit of orange in that um, in that aroma there. But yeah, as you can see with this one, it's poured a lovely golden hazy colour. There's a solid finger of a frothy, I would say that's a perfect white head on this one. It's not even a little bit creamy. Definitely a perfect white head on this one. Lovely bright yellow colour. If I put my fingers behind the glass there, you can see that it is a nice bright and yellow kind of almost straw colour actually. But one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, but not much carbonation visible otherwise. There are one or two little bubbles going up towards the bottom of that head. But in terms of a paleo, a New England style paleo, not too surprising in terms of its appearance, although I would say I have seen hazier ones than this. But it does seem to be in recent times that the New England IPAs are becoming a little bit clearer rather than the kind of hop soup if you like than, that they have been uh, previously. They do seem to be moving towards a more kind of west coast mouthfeel actually but um, yeah let's have a look at the aroma on this one and just see how we get on. Oh yeah that smells really nice. I'm pretty sure just going by the aroma in that there's a little bit of um mosaic in this one. There's a nice juicy tangerine orange coming out of this one and it has a little bit of blueberry in it as well. I smelt the blueberry and the tangerine as soon as I opened this one up and as soon as I did that I was thinking there's mosaic in there. Pretty certain of that. There's a little bit of a kind of passion fruity apricot-y kind of thing coming out of this one as well. Passion fruit of course, it could be a little bit of galaxy um, that's in this one too, but uh, you know the mosaic really is jumping out at me of this one. I'm pretty certain that's mosaic. I always love playing guess the hops with these beers, but for me, a nice tangerine orange in there, a little bit of blueberry. It could be a little bit of mango or something like that. There might be a little bit of citra in here as well, but there could equally be a little bit, I think it would be more... I don't think it's quite Simcoe that's in this one. The Simcoe is a very straight up passion fruit. There is a little edge of passion fruit in there, so there could be a little bit of uh, galaxy, I think. But to me, it's mainly a sort of lighter, juicy, tropical note. Mangoes, a little bit of passion fruit, something like that. There's maybe a little touch of grapefruit in there as well. Um, but yeah, the aroma on this one and the fruity side of things, very, very juicy. But I think tangerines, a little bit of passion fruit, maybe some apricots or something like that in there as well. Got some lovely kind of blueberry notes on the other end. It's a very, very juicy um, paleo, this one, and I think this is going to go down very, very nicely. Oh, I spilt a little bit of it on myself there. That sometimes happens when you do beer videos, right enough. But yeah, other than that and the aroma, you can definitely smell a little bit of an oaty, kind of biscuity sort of thing with this one. De yeah, definitely some kind of creaminess from the oats, definitely a little bit of a white bready quality to it as well, some sweeter biscuity qualities, some nice grassiness to the hops as well, and a little touch of a floral quality, so everything that you would expect from the New England sort of pale ale IPA type thing is in here, but overall the aroma on this one really leans towards the fruity, juicy side of things. You have to take the aroma in just that little bit more deeply to get some of the more malty characteristics out of it, but it smells like a very very nice beer and uh, I'm very curious to see how this one turns out. So this one is the Fuzzy, a 5.8% New England style pale ale from Napa beer just outside of Pamplona in Nauwin in the northern part of Spain. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, skull, salud.
yeah that's a pretty nice beer I mean by no means is this one as punchy as some of the ones that you're going to come across from uh, from Napa beer but you know I always view the pale ale as, as, as supposed to be like a little bit more of a slightly more sessionable version of an IPA and it certainly suits that down to the, the to the ground it's got a lot more it's got a lot of flavor to it it's got a nice smooth malt base you know it's meant to be an easy drinker this and it certainly fits that bill you know uh, in terms of a pale ale I don't think there's much more you can ask for from this one it's just it's very very nicely done I have to say yeah no it gets a thumbs up from me um, as I say it's not quite as big and bold as some of these beers that I've had from Napa beer before but it's certainly you know it's certainly a good one that is it's a good beer it's um you know it, it really does just kind of hit the spot so let's try and break this down a little bit then in the middle of your palate you get a nice sort of um smooth you get a, you definitely get a little bit of that smooth kind of white bready quality in there that blankets the middle of your tongue i'm finding that the malt base kind of sweetens up a little bit the further into the aftertaste you go with this one there's a nice little bit of a kind of um I would say there's a nice little bit of a, a kind of oaty creaminess to this one, but in the middle of your palate there's a good little biscuity presence in there as well actually. And it's the biscuity notes and the oatiness that are really making this kind of um, sweeten up a little bit the further into the aftertaste you go. Yeah. Um, I find in that towards the front of the palate as well, it's a little bit sweeter. Um, obviously, if you have a full-blown IP, it's going to have a little bit more malt in it because that's how you get the higher alcohol content right enough. But I would say, you know, this is at 5.8%. It's not too far away from what you would expect an IPA to be. I, was, I think the IPA borderline for me usually is around the kind of 6% mark. I would always say that an IPA is kind of between 6 and sort of 7.5%. I think once you go above 7.5%, maybe 8%, um, you know, once you're starting to get into that sort of territory, but between 7.5 and sort of 9, 10%, I guess, is when you're in the, the double IPA category. And beyond that, of course, you get triple IPAs and stuff like this. This one is quite heavy in its alcohol for a pale ale, I would say. Normally, for me, a pale ale has, you know, it's anything below sort of five percent um but yeah it's definitely got a, a lot of flavor to it and the malt base does have a good presence you know and this one it's probably debatable about whether this is actually a paleo or an ipa because it is that little bit that little bit sort of a stronger but then again the ipas and the paleos the thing that separates them in terms of you know you know technically it's to do with the malt to hop ratio so maybe they've brewed with the same malt to hop ratio and just made it a little bit stronger but in terms of its alcohol content usually this beer would perhaps be more fitting to be called an IPA but you know we can get into the technicalities all we like the main thing is that it's a nice tasting beer and um, you know it certainly is that it does you know fit the bill quite nicely yeah I like how this one um, goes together so on the hoppy side of things then, the back corners of the palate, there's a little tiny touch of earthiness in there. Again, that makes me think they've put mosaic in this one. But as you come further forward along the sides of your palate, it just smooths out a little bit. And then you get a nice little bit of floral aromaticity towards the front corners of your palate there. And round the very front curve of the tongue, again, it's just a little bit lighter and grassy. But you can feel some of the more floral elements just creeping out around the, uh, creeping around the sort of front of your tongue there too. And behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that nice little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. For me, there's a little bit of passion fruit just kind of underpinning this one. Um, I'm not sure if it's galaxy or what it is, but I think there's a little bit of mango in there. There could be a little bit of a kind of apricot note to this one as well, but when you move further forward towards the tip of the tongue, there's definitely a little touch of a tangerine orange to it. And on the very tip of your palate, you can pick out there's a little bit of a blueberry ester in there as well. I'm almost certain there's a bit of mosaic in here. The, there's just so many things to me that are making me think mosaic straight away um, and I think the other one 
the other hops in this one. There could be a little touch of galaxy or something like that because I think there's a definite kind of passion fruity flavour to this one. Um, but you know there could just as well be a little bit of citra. And but I think something there's something telling me that it's, I don't think it's Simcoe that's in this one. It's got a little bit too much complexity to it to be Simcoe. Simcoe I've always found is very straight up with its uh, with its passion fruit. I think it could be galaxy that's in this one because there's almost just a little bit of a pineapple note the further into the aftertaste you go. But this one, you know, it has a lot of juicy fruitiness to it and it's just very, very nicely done. It's definitely one of the kind of more complex paleos that I've come across in recent times. And um, it's got a nice drinkability to it. As I say, there's a bit of a debate in my head whether this should be an IPA or, uh, or a paleo because it is a little bit heavier in its alcohol compared to other paleos. But the main thing, as I said, is it a good beer? Absolutely. It really is nicely done. And if you like the Mosaic Hop, and you like these tangerine blueberry notes, you're going to enjoy this one. If you like the, the, the passion fruity notes, again, this is one that's going to hit the spot for you. It's, it's a really nice paleo, and again, you can't really ask for much more than that from the brewery. And it's cool to see these sort of beers being produced in Spain as well now. But yeah, I like how everything is... Uh, it's going together in this one. I can feel more of the oaty notes um, pushing their way out on the, the malt base of this. Now, the oats are coming out just that little bit more, but a very, very solid beer. So, thumbs up to the guys at Napa Beer for this one. I would really like to try a darker beer from them. As I always say, I think pretty much all the beers I've reviewed from these guys have been, uh, you know, the new IPAs. I think I've had a West Coast and a couple of New England IPAs and Paleos and stuff like that. I'd love to try something like a Stout or an Imperial Stout from them just to see how they do at the other end of the spectrum. But then again, probably in a country as hot as Spain, those styles are maybe not the most uh, popular. But I always think to get a good measure of a brewery, you want to try something from the darker end of the spectrum and something from the lighter end. And I've seen on numerous occasions from these guys that they can certainly do the lighter end of the spectrum well. So an Imperial Stout or a Scotch Ale or something like that from these guys, I think would be a very, very interesting change of pace because they seem to know what they're doing. Um, but yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then... For me, mid-bodied beer, um, leaning towards the bottom end of mid-bodied though, uh, carbonation is very smooth, the mouthfeel overall, it does have a good blend between being slightly oily and slightly creamy. As I've said, the New England style of beer tends to, seems to have moved away from that creamy, soupy sort of thing recently to have a little bit more of an oily, almost west coastish sort of texture to it, which I think is quite nice. Um, but in terms of IBUs, I would guess this one's somewhere around the kind of 30-ish mark, 20, 25, 30. Um, good little bit of juicy fruitiness to the beer and a nice kind of smooth, um, definitely a nice little bit of a smooth but also sweet character to the malt base. It's very, very well balanced, this beer, and it's got everything you would want from the style. Another very, very solid beer from Napa Beer. Not quite as punchy as some of their other ones, but a very nice kind of lighter and easy drinker, but a little bit heavy in terms of the paleo style in my opinion but I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this beer again so you know have a go at it for yourselves and just see what you think so yeah let's leave it at that for this one well, this one was the fuzzy a new england style paleo coming in at 5.8 percent abv and it's a very very solid beer if you like paleos if you like uh, the mosaic hop i'm pretty sure that's in here and if you like the sort of more tropical notes i think you're going to really, really enjoy this one. But let's leave it at that. So this one was the Fuzzy from Napa Beer. Very, very interesting beer. Thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Napa Beer. And I'm sure I'll return to them at some point in the near future. Make sure you check out my social media. And let me know any other Spanish craft breweries that you think I should take a look at. I do hope that I can get down there and visit them at some point soon. But until the next time, it's Lange just now. And I'll catch you guys later. The fuzzy from Napa Beer just outside of Pamplona in Nalween in Spain. Slanja, school, salute.